Nearly 25 years ago, a 12-year-old prince walked behind his mother's coffin as 2.5 billion people around the world watched. Now in the Apple TV series, The Me You Can't See, which he and Oprah Winfrey executive produced together, Prince Harry lays bare the lifelong trauma he suffered, and he's now healing through therapy. To make that decision to receive help is not a sign of weakness. In today's world, more than ever, it is a sign of strength. Harry admitting he suffered from anxiety and panic attacks. I wish she could have met Megan. I wish she was around for Archie. <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt that my mum would be incredibly proud of me. I'm living the life that she wanted to live for herself, living the life that she wanted us to be able to live. Well, so how do I fix this? And it was a case of you need to go back to the past, go back to the point of trauma, deal with it, process it, and then move forward. He spoke in the documentary series about uh, dealing with uh, drugs and alcohol use to sort of deal with the grief and the pain, um, but also how he felt so unable to protect his mother during a very vulnerable time. Are you surprised by the amount of personal information Harry is sharing? I am surprised because essentially he moved to America for privacy. And I think a lot of Brits are somewhat perplexed at the moment because this is the opposite to privacy. This is the opposite to living a quiet life. Harry's personal revelations and the results of an independent investigation that found the BBC was dishonest in securing that famous 1995 interview with Princess Diana, just the latest in the continuing drama surrounding the crown. Cracks in the royal armor first began to show early last year when Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle quit royal life and pulled back the curtain on one of the most revered but rigid institutions in the world. We've never heard really ever a member of the royal family speak so candidly about the pain they experience behind the scenes. I think Harry's remarks have been damaging, but they're coming from somebody who I think he's damaged. Mental health matters. In the five-episode docu-series about mental health, people from all walks of life sharing their most painful struggles. I don't tell this story from my own self-service, because to be honest, it's hard to tell. I feel a lot of shame about it. And after more than a year of global suffering during COVID-19, the new series tries to remind people that the pandemic has affected everyone. Grief isn't just losing someone. Mm -hmm. Grief is the loss of anything that matters. 36-year-old Prince Harry admits to being deeply scarred from life in a gilded cage. He wants his story out there too, because clearly he's very upset by what's happened. He hasn't found the solutions or the sort of acceptance or accountability within the institution that he wanted. And so here we are. He blames his father, Prince Charles, who he says did nothing to break the cycle of suffering in the royal family, telling his sons to keep the traditional stiff upper lip. Harry first revealing a rift with his father in that bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey. You literally cut me off financially, and I had to afford, afford security for, for us. Wait, hold, hold up, wait a minute. Your family cut you off? Yeah, in the first half, the first quarter of 2020. But I've got what my mum left me. And yeah. without that, we would not have been able to do this. And saying at one point, Prince Charles wasn't even taking his calls. Why do you stop taking your calls? Because I took matters in, by that point, I took matters into my own hands. It was like, I need to do this for my family. The criticism of Prince Charles and the British monarchy strikes some royal watchers as unfair. I think he did his very best for his sons in the aftermath of his ex-wife's tragic death. He has a lot of responsibility on his, on his plate as the patriarch of the royal family at the moment after the passing of the Duke of Edinburgh, which people seem to have forgotten um, whilst we hear about Harry's personal problems. The Queen has had, obviously, an incredibly difficult time of it over the past year. Her country has seen trauma that hasn't really been seen since World War II. She's just lost her husband of 73 years. It's got to be very difficult for her because also she has said, you know, Harry is very much a much loved grandson. Meghan is loved, but she's also got to be queen. It's putting her into an incredibly difficult position. Charles's troubled marriage to Diana took center stage in her bombshell interview with the BBC. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> 
That 1995 interview making news again this week. Diana's brother Charles, the Earl of Spencer, alleged the BBC had gotten the interview using false pretenses, that reporter Martin Bashir showed him forged bank statements to suggest that two royal employees were being paid to gather information on the princess. That alleged betrayal, Spencer says, convinced Diana to do the interview. An independent investigation of the BBC found that devious and dishonest and deceitful behavior were used to secure the interview. Prince William issuing a scathing response. It is my view that the deceitful way the interview was obtained substantially influenced what my mother said. The interview was a major contribution to making my parents' relationship worse and has since hurt countless others. I have never seen Prince William as angry as he was speaking about that Bashir interview. William was very much traumatized by Diana doing that interview. So one can only imagine how he's feeling at the moment with Prince Harry doing these series of interviews with Oprah. Bashir, who would leave the BBC and work at ABC and NBC before eventually returning to work at the BBC, says, I apologize then and I do so again now over the fact that I asked for bank statements to be mocked up. It was a stupid thing to do and it was an action I deeply regret. Diana was vulnerable and they were taking advantage of her vulnerability. Uh, at the same time, Princess Diana wanted her information out. She had her own narratives. And I think that she would have done, whether or not Bashir and the BBC had um, acted the way they did, I think she would have found a medium to get her story out. Prince Harry issuing a statement saying the ripple effect of a culture of exploitation and unethical practices ultimately took her life. The difference between Prince Harry and Prince William's statements were almost polar opposites. William, of course, spoke as a grieving son who wanted to get answers to a very difficult time in their lives. But of course, he was also speaking almost as a representative for the royal family. He was speaking as a future king. Whereas when we look at Harry's, it came straight from the heart. And on a BBC programme about the investigation, Earl Spencer making a connection between the interview and his sister's untimely death two years later. I do draw a line between the two events. And I think that Diana did lose trust in really key people. Martin, can we just get one of that please? And in the end, when she died two years later, she was without any uh, form of real protection. This marriage was always going to end in divorce. The reality is Diana died sadly, tragically, a few years later in a car crash. And you cannot necessarily link the two. Ever since he started to date Meghan, Harry has feared that history would repeat itself with her. He shared his fears in the ITV documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey. Everything that she went through and what happened to her is incredibly raw every single day. And that's not me being paranoid, that's just me not wanting a repeat of, of the past. His mother and Meghan were both under relentless scrutiny from the paparazzi. And while in public, Meghan seemed poised and confident. But behind those perfect images, she says she struggled. Prince Harry revealing that not only was Meghan having suicidal thoughts when these pictures were taken, she shared with him the practicalities of how she would end her life. We've never really heard just how hard it was during those lowest points. and. To then see those images of them in front of the cameras, the, the glitzy dress, the holding their hands, taking the great photos, it, it sort of gives us this insight into the sometimes dark world of being a working member of the royal family, that you have to switch it on, that that stiff upper lip is important if you want to survive. Harry says he has no regrets and credits his wife for helping him finally move on from his trauma. We as a public have almost been with Harry on this journey of self-discovery and dealing with his own grief and pain and his mental health issues. We're now getting a better idea of who he is, and I think he is at the same time as well. Not only do I know that she's incredibly proud of me, but that she's helped me get here. And I've never felt her presence more as I have done over the last year. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.